What up, though, guys? It's your girl, Zsa and you are listening to Yeah, I Said It. Y'all already know before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it, and I know you heard me the first time. Listen, I know it is Thankful Thursdays, and as I say, each and every week, we have the activities of our limbs. We ain't in nobody's hospital. We ain't in nobody's jail, and I'm telling you, they got room for all of us. So listen, if you think you need somewhere to stay, they got room. Okay, Uh, if you're tuning in, you're listening to Yeah, I Said It. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. And I'm talking all about I deserve better. I deserve better. I deserve better. Listen, if you're tuning in, you're listening to Yeah, I Said It. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about I deserve better. I deserve better. Listen, it's Thankful Thursdays. As I say each and every week, listen, we have the activities of our limbs. We ain't in nobody's hospital. We ain't in nobody's jail because they do got room. Like I say each and every week. But I'm talking all about you deserve better. You know, over this past week, I have um, had the opportunity of going to L.A., uh, Los Angeles, California. And um, I was there on uh, business and pleasure. Um, of course, I have never been able to actually uh, go somewhere and not have to worry about, am I going to have enough money for bills when I come back? Am I going to have to, you know, go take some extra hours at work? You know how we do, y'all. So I'm always conscientious. Even when I've had money, I've always been conscientious. Okay, if I spend this money, when I get done spending it, am I going to have money when I get back? I've always lived that life cautiously. Um, and as entrepreneurs, as uh, black families, as black mothers and fathers, as, as a black community, we have to be very, very, very conscientious of how we spend our money. You know, I've had people uh, tell me, you know, how frivolous they've been and their spending and, and, and how, you know, there is no paper shortage here and how, you know, we got this and we got that. But I really question, do you really know you deserve better? Or are you looking to stunt in front for somebody else to make them seem as if you're doing better? See, one of the things that that I love about Los Angeles, California, is that don't nobody care about nothing. They just they just be living a little life just in their own world. They ain't looking at. ooh, look at them with a new Ferrari. Ooh, look at them with a Rolls Royce truck. Uh, What they think they all that. Ooh, look at them. She got on Chanel glasses. They ain't doing none of that in L.A. In L.A., they don't care. You know why? Because everybody's doing their own thing. They just riding their own waves, living their own lives. We have to get to a point here in the city of Detroit where we are opening our arms to one another and not looking at one another like, ugh, look at them trying to open up a Coney Island. Ugh, look at them trying to, ugh. It's like, I just feel like when I came back and landed here in Detroit, it was just like this, this like dark cloud. And the thing about it is, is that I know it to be true because whenever I go places and I visit places, not only here in Detroit, Uh, Not only here in the state of Michigan, but across the country. And they always say, you're from Detroit. And And I know this to be true, because if you've ever traveled and if you've ever went somewhere and you said you were from Detroit, there's a distinction that we have. When people ask me, was I from Detroit? You know, the first thing they would say, you guys are coming back together, huh? You guys, you guys went through some some heavy stuff in Detroit, huh? This is what people are saying that are from different like L.A. is like a a, a, a cesspool of diversity. Like it's a it's like you can get one person that's literally um, uh, they have multiple ethnicities like black is the dominating DNA. Right. But then they are also combined with Hispanic. They're also like they have Irish and, and, and German and, and and like they're infused with different things. Right. So it's very diverse. And whenever I talked about, you know, I'm from Detroit because I rep Detroit. I ain't, I ain't ashamed 
Okay, now it's some stuff there that I, in here in this city that I wish I could change. There are some people that don't need to be in some positions that they're in. There are some things that I know about people that you all don't know about um, that I would have loved to see them going on about their business because they, they have already messed our city up so bad to the point where it's going to be challenging for us to actually have a, a real uh, a real skin in the game for a lot of the changes that are happening here. There are things that are happening within our city, within the city of Detroit that are going to affect you. And, and you don't even, you don't even understand it all the way down to, uh, how we have our water, our gas, our, our rent, our mortgage, the banks, our food. There are so many different components on how we live our everyday life that you don't think is affected by the leadership that we have. And see, if you're tuning in, I'm talking about, first of all, if you're tuning in, you're listening to, yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about, I deserve better. I deserve better. One of the things that I loved about when I was in California is the fact that, um, you know, we were able to really do some, some really great things. We were able to go places and travel and, and find dine and, and be amongst um, some really uh, affluent people. And one of the things that I love is that God did not give me the spirit of fear. And I love how one of my, my godmothers and my mentors, um, she, she had me watch one of her videos and she was talking about, she was talking about, um, God has not given me the spirit of fear and, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And the thing about it is, is that fear can paralyze us to the point where we won't go after our dreams. We won't go after what we really deserve. We won't go after what, what God has shown us because we're looking at our reality. And see, you know, people have the tendency to make you feel like you're asking for too much or, or you're doing too much. No, they ain't doing enough. I love Cash Dial song where she say, uh-uh, no, 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 no. Y'all say y'all doing too much? Well, y'all ain't doing enough. Because here, and, and, and one of the things that I that I loved when I went to L.A., they were like, oh, you want to do this? Okay. And the crazy thing about it, let me tell y'all, I was talking to somebody, right, just having a genuine, regular conversation, and then somebody else overheard us talking, only for us to have a whole nother connection. That's the type of place that we need to get into. Not a, oh, you trying to do this, or oh, you trying to do that. Anybody that's trying to better their lives, you should be happy for them. If they want to go back to school, you should be encouraging them to do so. If they want to lose weight, whether it's a, a one pound or a hundred pounds, hell, you knew how hard it was to lose weight, gain weight, get your hair back, lose the hair and all of these different things. So how dare you try to discourage or discredit somebody else for trying to be better? You know, I had a, a, a dialogue last night with the individual that let me know that they ain't mature yet. They ain't grew up yet. They ain't grew up yet. Because the first thing that they wanted to do was throw out insults. See, we've gotten to the place where we haven't matured. And see, that billionaire game, that millionaire game, that thousandaire game, that success game, you got to mature. You, you, listen, let me tell you something. A lot of my business mentors are men, not because I don't have women business mentors to follow, but because when it comes to certain type of things, people have to understand you need certain type of a focus. It's facts over feelings. And see, a lot of y'all get y'all feelings hurt because you're leading with feelings. Oh, I don't feel like it. I'm too tired today. Oh, he got me feeling some type of way. Let me tell you something. I won't ever let another person move me off my square. Because when I let other people pull at me off of feelings, I was messed up. I was over here in fear because I was dealing with feelings. And see, ain't no money in no feelings. Ain't no bag in the feelings. When you tear a hundred dollar bill, Benjamin Franklin ain't crying about it. They, the the, the hundred dollar bill does not say, oh God, don't tear me. 
No, because you know why? They don't care. The money was meant to be spent. And see, a lot of us, we have become so emotionally traumatized. We don't know how to do business with one another. We afraid that if somebody else get ahead of us, that they gonna leave us behind and be more successful than us. That is re the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. And, I, and the thing about it is, is that when you have a predominantly African-American community like ours, there is no reason why none of us shouldn't be successful. There is no reason why none of us should be in six figures and beyond. And see, I'm going to tell you something. White folks are very smart. We're smart too. But we get distracted easily. We get distracted by things that do not matter. Right now, my main focus, my main focus is Jaja and Tayshawn. Now, anybody else, I'm going to help. And for those who don't know, Tayshawn's my son, my one and only child. Anything that's connected to my son is my number one priority. Now, it may not be your priority. It may not be his relative's priority. It may not be his friend's priority. Hell, it may not even be the school or the administrator's priority. But guess what? I'm his mama, so he my priority. Anything that's connected to him is my priority. Just like anything that's connected to me is my priority. I won't ever let anything else be a priority before me and my child. And see, a lot of y'all, y'all want to help everybody but yourself and the people you're responsible for. I'm not helping nobody else with business and all of these different things if my stuff ain't together. You can't help nobody do nothing if your stuff ain't tight. You can't, you cannot delegate, you cannot give advice to, if your stuff is not together, that should be your focus. That's it, the end, nothing else. Because see, what I what I had the hard time of doing is being nice. You know, I'm nice. You know, and I had that can't tell people no spirit. You know, oh, I need a ride or you got time to take me here or, you know, what you about to do? And then I get caught up in somebody else's stuff when I should have been focusing in on my stuff. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to Yah said it before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking about I deserve better. The minute that I knew I deserve better was the minute that the person that knew I deserve better acknowledged it. See, there are people that you're connected to to know that uh, you deserve better. Right now, you're in a relationship where you know, uh-uh, this ain't right. I, I'm not, first of all, I'm too fine, okay, too snatched, okay, listen, I may have to buy my edges, but they laid, and I'm not about to sit up here and get less than what I deserve, so you mean to tell me that I'm supposed to be okay with getting the bare minimum, and see, this is why a lot of us become frustrated, because we're frustrated with people who keep giving us the bare minimum, and we want them to give us the maximum. They're not going to. There are people that I thought had matured because of age. They ain't matured. They just got older. There are a lot of people that don't mean you no good that smile on your face. The same people that Jesus healed and helped were the same people that said crucify him. So if they did it to, if they did it to our Lord and Savior, I know they're going to do it to me. But see, this is the thing that I love that God has shown us. He said that you. You have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. So if God didn't give you the spirit of fear, who gave it to you? Who's causing you to be fearful? See, there was a point in my life where I didn't want to be so outspoken because I, I didn't want to step on nobody's toes. I didn't want to become the enemy. But I'm going to tell you something. In order for you to be successful, you're going to have some enemies. You're going to have some people that ain't going to like you. There are going to be some people that ain't going to like you just because you just you just you. There are people that don't like me right now just because I'm me, because how I wear my hair, because my lashes stay laid. My lip liner is the bomb.com. And guess what? It's going to always be the bomb.com. You ain't going to catch me slipping. And if you do catch me slipping, guess what? I'm going to slip right back into my position. Because people are anticipating for you to fail. They don't want your little business to be successful. You out here talking about I'm about, I'm about to open up a business. They all looking at you like, 
They giving you the Bernie Sanders. They hitting you with you. They hitting you with one of these. We going to see. Because they all watching you. They watching you with your business plan. They watching you post. And I'm going to tell y'all something. God is my witness. Don't you stop. Don't you get discouraged. Whatever God put on your heart. Whatever you say, whatever God showed you that you can have, you go after it. If don't nobody else believe it but you. There were times, y'all, where I wanted to kill myself. Kill myself. Take myself out of here. Be done. I was going to give myself an ending date. I wasn't going to wait for the Lord to, to give me my ending date because I was okay with ending my own life. And I'm going to tell you something. There are times in our lives where things hurt us and bring us down to the point where we want to kill ourselves. We want to hurt our own selves. People have, people have made me feel a, a certain type of way at times where I felt less than. These were supposed to be Christians, saints, family, friends. People that said they love me. What kind of love was that? What, what? And then... I've also had to learn because I know I deserve better because you know, you deserve better. I'm not going to be fearful in telling you I deserve better. People can call me crazy all they want to, but what they won't be able to call me is broke. They won't be able to call me unsuccessful. They won't be able to call me not determined. They won't be able to call me not committed to my craft. They won't be able to say she ain't a hard worker. They won't be able to say she wasn't a good mother. They won't be able to say, you can say whatever you want to say about me. But you won't be able to say that. Because see, people love when they can't attack you personally. When they can't, when they can't attack what you're building, they'll attack your character. Oh, she just, she's so dramatic. She's this, she's that. Oh, yeah, Emma, I'm the same person that you asking for resources for. Same person that they, they see, it's real interesting. And I, I pay attention to people. I'm certified in people. People are quick to discredit you when you don't agree with them. You know, when y'all are on odds or, or bad terms. That's why I love having, um because I'm a thought leader and I'm a provoker, I love to see when there's an issue or, 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 or a discrepancy or a disagreement, how it gets resolved. Because that'll let you know if the person you're dealing with or the people you're dealing with truly value you. See, yesterday I had a discrepancy uh, about some paperwork with my kid, my child. And like I told y'all earlier, what did I say? I don't play about my child. I don't care who it is. You heard me? And let me tell you something. My son's future is predicated upon what I do as his mama. See, your children, your children grow up to be respectable, productive citizens in the city of Detroit or whatever state or whatever country they decide to reside. You are who you are because of who invested their time in you. See, as a kid, I knew I deserved better. Watching my mama get beat up by my daddy watching him hold her hand in public and punch her in the face in private, I knew I deserved better. Watching teachers leave DPS because they not getting the proper support that they deserve, I watched it. I was a student of DPS. And a lot of y'all are DPS alums. And you've seen teachers give their all, come in with their own supplies, pay for stuff while principals spend money and steal, superintendents steal, uh, uh, school board members steal, people just stealing from the babies. And then you want to know why, why, why the wrath is on our community the way it is. Because people don't want to do right by other people. If you're listening, you're listening to you I said it before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time. You already know. Listen, follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Facebook. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Share this video because you know you deserve better. And you know somebody that is suffering right now. And you know they deserve better. I had a good girlfriend. And, and she was in a situation where... It wasn't conducive to her mental health, her physical health, her emotional health. 
she was attached to a person from the outside looking in. He, he looked like the man. But he was he was possessive. He was crazy. He was he was violent. He was a manipulator. He was purely disgusting. But to the average eye, to the average eye, he was amazing. He was wonderful. And my friend was suffering. And I would tell my friend, listen, F that ninja. Exit stage left. What you want me to go do? I said, I support whatever decision you make. If you want to stay cool, if you want to leave, leave. I said, but I'm going to tell you as your friend, as somebody that loves you and cares about you, you deserve better. And if you got to constantly tell somebody that they deserve better, that's because they got low self-esteem. A lot of people got low self-esteem and you don't even know that they do. Yeah, people got cardies, chains, blown bundles, breasts is high and lifted up, booty out for days. Listen, they got long money and a long Johnson. But guess what? They have low self-esteem. They don't have confidence. They buy things to make you think that they do. They hold titles and positions to make you think that they are confident. Some of you who don't have nothing are probably more confident and more successful than the people that are in positions. But I'm going to tell you something. When you learn that you deserve better, you won't allow anybody to give you anything less. And you learn to be okay with not feeling bad. I don't feel bad for what I ask for because God told me I can have anything that I ask long as it's law, uh, lawful, it's not, it's not unethical. It's not against the law. It's not unethical. And it's not hurting anybody. So when you are following God and you're doing things that are lawful and you're doing things that are ethical and you're doing things that not only help you, but the people that come behind you and the people that are attached to you, why would I allow you to give me anything less? Why would I do that? Why would I allow you to give me spam when I've already had him? Why would I allow you to bring me the lowest of the lowest when I've already tasted the high of the high? Why would I do that? This is one of the reasons why in the Bible, he, the, the prodigal son, when he was able to come back home and the dad opened him with open arms because when you are a royal priesthood, when you are a chosen generation, when you are a peculiar people, you don't fit in with everybody. You ain't going to get uh, what everybody's supposed to get. There were times where I felt like I didn't get what I deserved. I didn't fit in. I didn't that I wasn't. They didn't welcome me like they welcomed everybody else. And I used to feel bad. Like, what's wrong with me? Like. Like my edges are snatched, you know, I'm intelligent. I ain't talking crazy. I can but why they, ain't, why they ain't feeling me? You feel me? But then it was because I didn't realize that I deserved better. And check this out. God will prevent certain relationships from happening because you do deserve better. There are certain things that won't happen because you haven't decided, you know what? I don't need to deal with this no more. I don't need to deal with this no more. I don't got to deal with this no more. See, the only reason why my mom wasn't able to escape my father was because my father went to prison. Okay. He went to prison for six and a half years and she decided to divorce my father while he was in prison. Okay. That was my mother's escape. And unfortunately, you don't want to get to a place where God will set up a situation and you only got one way out. When he's giving you multiple ways right now. There were situations where when God gave me the exit, I exited stage left. The Listen, the minute I saw exit, I was gone. I ain't look back. Then there were some things that I stayed around for because, you know, it was comfortable. And I've been knowing him for a long time. And it was familiar and there was love there. And we went to the same school and. We, we, we grew up around the same folks and, you know, we went to the same church and you, we liked the same color. And, you know, we, there were things that I still had to start reevaluating some things. I had to start, I had to start reevaluating some situations in my life because I knew 
this was not my best. See, some of us get comfortable in just a little bit of love. Listen, I want all the love that God wants for me. I don't want nothing half ass. For y'all saints is watching, ass is the back of a donkey. It's the dunk, uh, ass is a donkey, okay? There. Um, But I don't want nothing half ass. Don't give me, don't give me 50%. And I'm giving you my hundred. Now, there are going to be situations in life, in marriage, in parenting, where things won't always be 50-50, right? I'm a mama. I'm a parent that's single, okay? And that's by choice. But what I do understand is that I didn't have Tayshawn by myself, okay? And for those of you who are parents or those of you who are seeking marriage or who have been married or married right now, you know that these relationships are not always 50-50. I'm going to tell you something. One of the most challenging uh, titles and positions that you will ever hold is being a parent. Being a parent is the most devastating and most rewarding position that you will ever have. Because you have the propensity to change the trajectory of somebody's life by simply raising them right. And then you get to a point where... They start making their own decisions and you have to let them go on about their day and release them. Because as a parent, as a husband, as a wife, you want the best for your child or your mate, but you can't make them do certain things. You can't make them want better. You only can show them access and resources that allow them to see something better. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to, yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about, I deserve better. You deserve better because you do. There is no reason why. And, you know, there are things in life that people are petty about. And, and when, you, when I say you deserve better, I'm not saying every time we go to a restaurant, you got to take your food back because... Uh, it, it's, it's one thing wrong with it. No, I'm not saying that. Now, if you pay for something, you deserve quality. I am saying that because I've been on both ends as a customer and as the person who has to give the service. But what you also have to understand and recognize, deserving better also means that if this is your better that you're giving me, I have two options. I can take what you've given me and deal with it. Or I can say, you know what? I don't like what you're giving me. And I'm just going to go on about my business. Because one of the things that I've learned that in this season, the, the, the month of April, my whole thought process has been cleanse, 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 detox. And see, a lot of people hear cleanse and detox. They think physical. They think, oh, I'm a poop. Um, you know, I'm a urinate anything that I've eaten, you know, uh, any, any, any type of, you know, parasites or bacteria that's, you know, have accumulated in my colon and in my digestive system. That's the cleanse. That's the detox. No, some of you need a spiritual cleanse. You need a physical cleanse. You need an emotional cleanse. Hell, you, you just need a cleanse. Okay. Because at the end of the day, some of us have been connected to people, their energy, their space. That that was weighing us down and see, I'm going to tell you something. When God has delivered you from certain things, residue will be around. And if you don't know anything about residue, residue is is like the aftermath of something. You know, have have you ever been around uh, somebody and you knew they were smoking weed and it's because of the residue, the aroma that's on them? It's like, oh, somebody was smoking some weed. Or or somebody has fried fish or, or cooked some chicken long ago. They they it been hours. It's been hours. And you just so happen to come by. Who, who was cooking chicken? Because of the residue. And see, when you are connected to people that, that aren't doing you right, you end up having a little residue. You have a little residue from them. You know what I'm saying? That, that guy that tickled your fancy that you were so in love with, that you thought you couldn't live without. It's a little bit of residue still around. You know why I know? Because you still think about him. Still think about her. You still, you still have those memories. And see, 
You got to learn to detox the people that didn't mean you no good. The things that didn't mean you no good. Right now, I'm dealing with a cleanse and a detox so that I can deal with some things that I don't want to hinder me in this next season in my life. There are some things that I got to get tightened. I got to tighten up some stuff, just like you do. There are some things that you got to tighten up in order for God to open up this next door in this next season. When I went out to California, I was so elated and just bombarded with positive vibes and just, it just felt right. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't saying I'm leaving y'all to go to Cali, but I will be there a lot more often because of what I'm working on. And at the end of the day, this is only because God said, you know what? You are making the necessary changes. You are cutting ties with the with unnecessary people that are that are hindering your growth. God honors what you commit yourself to. You you move when you when God see you moving your feet, he'll give you a seat. When God see, okay, I look at what I gave her. Look what I gave my daughter. Look what I gave my son. Look look at them. They 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 taking that little bitty idea, right? That little bitty business that everybody else said, and they and they and they blossom in it. And see, God will do this. He'll blow on your stuff, and it'll be fire. And now, while everybody else was dogging you out, everybody was talking about you. You getting awarded in New York, and you celebrated in L.A. and in Florida, they they chanting your music, and and in D.C. they wearing your shirt. See, I ain't worried about who ain't supporting me. I no longer even care. That is not, e listen, I don't need to know who don't like me. I don't even care. Let me tell you something. Because I know I deserve better, I also know I want to be around people who also want me to have better. See, you got to, in order for you to maintain your blessings, you got to be around people that don't mind seeing you blessed. See, I enjoy being around people who care about me. You know why? Because they take pleasure in seeing me being successful. You got to be mindful of people that 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 only that 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 only like you when when you're struggling. They only like you when you're trying to make it. When you're trying to figure it out, they don't. They don't never. They, it's it's fine. I find it very uh, uh, interesting that. People seem to not know what you're doing, seem to not, you know, be big on what it is that you're trying to maintain, but yet they know everything you're doing. Let me tell you something. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power of loving of a sound mind. And if you anticipate to do anything in life, you're going to have to have a sound mind, which means you're going to have to cleanse your mind from people and things that are not supposed to be in there. When I went out to L.A., let me tell you, let me tell you why traveling and networking is important, because traveling, networking and the, because traveling and networking is important because it develops a part of you that you didn't know you had. When you travel, it opens your eye gates that's connected to your mind. It's just like whenever you watch something, have you ever watched something and then now you have become inspired? Now you have become inspired in your mind. Have you ever watched a movie and now you can't sleep because now whatever you was thinking about is in your mind? Have you, have you ever have you ever watched somebody and you became in so inspired? You just walked out the door and just started going to go be great. That's the power of the mindset. When he said when God said, I've not given you a spirit of fear. So what that tells me is. That fear is a spirit. So you got to be mindful of the people that you connect with because they'll tap on a spirit of fear on you. We know that spirits travel. Spirits are currency. I teach my son to be fearless. And it's so funny that my tax, my accountant is on right now. Shout out to Terry Davis. Show me the money because I'm going to tell you something. He had a rock waller, y'all. My tax, my tax accountant, my accountant. He had a Rockwaller, y'all. This Rockwaller looked like a whole human being. It was like a baby bear. I promise you. I ain't even lying. If I'm lying, I'm flying. 
my tax preparer had a, ba a, a baby bear as a dog. Okay. And I told my son, I said, he has a dog and his dog is huge. And my son was scared of dogs at one point in his life. But I'm going to tell you something. This goes back to the scripture. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. I made my son stand right there when that dog walked past. And I told him, I said, I dare you cry. I'm going to blow your junk out. I dare you get you. Yeah, you could be scared. But that fear, you're going to have to tuck that fear. You're going to have to tuck that fear. Y'all don't think I'm, I'm, I'm scared and I'm fearful when I go speak. When I go speak before stages and before I get on a mic, it comes off as confident because that's what I do. But I'm scared. But I ain't fearful because God ain't gave me no spirit of fear. I'm brave. And I ain't talking about the team. Listen, in order for you to win at this life, you can't be no punk. You can't be no scary cat. Talking about, I don't know if it's going to work. How you saying you deserve better, but you, you, you scared to try. Everything that I have acquired in my life in terms of success, it is because I was not afraid or fearless or fearful to try it. There are people right now that want to do some things and, and believe that they deserve some things, but because, but because, because somebody put your fear, put somebody put fear in you, now you can't do it. You done grown up and somebody done told you, you're fat, you ain't gonna never lose weight, you this, you that, and now it's stuck in your brain. You can't move past the fat little girl you used to be and the fat little boy you used to be because that's all you stuck on. That's all you stuck on. Sound mind, sound mind. You think I care about somebody knowing I'm bald headed? I don't care. Yeah, I got alopecia. And you know what? I help so many people who have alopecia, who have suffered from hair loss with cancer, who have suffered from hair loss from stress, who have suffered from hair loss because of radiation and chemo. Do you think for one second I care about some people that know me that's going to make fun of me? Do you think I really care that somebody who's doing less than me got something to say about what I'm building? God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power. And see, I'm going to tell you something. Powerless people know people who got power. Let me tell you something. Powerless people know the people who really got power. See, I'm going to tell you something. Powerless people don't want to give you your accolades and your kudos. Because all it will do is solidify who you already know that you are. The minute that I knew I deserved better was the minute that I got better. I ain't about to be no lifetime baby mama when God told me I'm a wife. <laughs> Boo, listen, if you okay with being a baby mama for the rest of your life, kudos to you, sis. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Can't be. And, and you ain't about to be calling me a wifey and I ain't your wife. Not I, said the cat. Not this cat. But then again, you got to understand, everybody don't feel like they deserve better. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to Yah, I said it, and before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time. Listen, follow me on social media, on all my social media platforms. You know Jaja because you do. Okay, stop back and fake. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe. I need some subscribers and I need more subscribers. So go on here, go to YouTube, click subscribe and stop being fake. OK, because, you know, Jaja, because, you know, you do. If you didn't, you wouldn't be watching. Me. Listen, make sure you check out my website. If you want to order some of my. Yeah, I said it gear. I got some amazing things coming up and, you know, I got a little hook up for 420. I'm going to show you all or whatever and whatnot. And then, of course, every Friday, my TV show, Uncommon Conversations with Jaja comes out on WHPR, historical channel owned and operated by the one and only historical RJ Watkins. Listen, that is channel 90 on Comcast. And if you just got regular TV like me with a little bit of Wi-Fi, it is regular TV channel 15.2 on analog TV. You also can download the WHPR Detroit Live app, or you can just go ahead and simply go to my YouTube or my website, to see the new episode. Listen, I'm I'm on my way. God is opening up doors that no man can shut.
And so when you know that no man can shut the doors of God open, you're not going to allow nobody to give you anything less. If your father, which sits in heaven, who sits high and looks low, looking and beholding the good and the evil, and he knows everything. See, this is the this is why I love God so much. I love him. I love God. Don't y'all? I love God because God knows what people say and he know what they're thinking at the same time. He knows what intentions are behind the things that people say. He knows the intentions behind the things that people do. That's why people who dog out other people's families and, and, and always got their mouth on people. See, you talking about somebody else. Guess what? It's about 10 people looking at you, pointing at you. So I used to get upset when people used to say things and mean things about me. I used to be upset when people used to do me dirty and, and, and dog me out. But then I said, you know what? I can't worry about that. I only can worry about what I can control and what I do and how I deal with the situation and how I and how I take care of what God has given me. If I know I deserve better and I don't deserve anything less and I know that my promotion comes from God and not from man, then why am I fearful about what you think of me? If I know I deserve better and you know I know I deserve better and you ain't the better for me, why would I? Why would I want to continue suffering? There are people in your life that you know that are suffering and you know they deserve better. That's why I never understood, you know, when my mom was going through these things, she was going through and you knew you deserved better. Where, were where was wisdom? Where were people, where were people in her life that were supposed to be her friends and say, hey, Kelly, you deserve better, boo. This, this is not, this is not who you, you cover girl, Kelly. You ain't supposed to be getting beat up. Other women in her life. But see, that goes to show you the type of people that you're dealing with because everybody does not have power, a sound mind. Some people have the spirit of fear and they want you to be scary too. They don't want you to travel. They don't want you to be great. They want you to be right here local, right here on the block, right there with them. That crabs in a bucket mentality and crabs in a bucket mentality comes from fear. Fear that you are going to be greater than me. Do you know how many people? Do you realize how many people were in competition with me and we are not even in the same industry? <laughs> like how you how do you anticipate to win? We ain't even in the same career field. So I don't even look at you as competition. But while people were looking at you as competition, I was looking at them as a friend. I was looking at them as family. There are people that are looking at you as competition in your family. And I'm trying to figure out why. When we could be doing more together than we ever could apart. But that goes back to a sound mind. When you don't have a sound mind, everything looks suspicious. Everything looks like it's, it's something. And I'm going to tell you this. Life's lessons will teach you about what you deserve and what you don't. Because when you come to making the right choices, the right choices that you make right now, will catapult you. And I said this last week, the choices that you make right now will set you up with your finances to get you and sustain you for 10 years and the years to come. But if you don't, if you make poor choices in this season right now with your finances, because you want to ball out, you want to keep up with the Joneses, you want to look fresh to death, but you still renting, your credit messed up, you got stuff all jacked up. See, it, it's, it's about building there were there were situations that we ran into in California that um I had bought I bought packages, right? The works. Let me get let me get the tickets, the car, Airbnb, boom, 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 right? Proper planning prevents poor performance. That's what I've been taught by my mentor, Tanya Champion. Proper planning prevents poor performance. But I'm gonna tell you something. What happens when you've planned? And something ends up still performing poorly. What happens when you give a situation your all 
and you still end up shorthanded. See, one of the things that I've learned in life is that you can give somebody something you're all and you can still come out on the short end of the stick. I talked to my son and my sister and his girlfriend over our spring break because, you know, while we here, we kicking it. And I told them there are going to come a time in your lives as young adults where you're going to do everything right on your job and your boss is still going to be an asshole. There are going to be times that you are going to be in relationships and you are going to be so faithful and so loyal and they'll still cheat on you. There are going to be times where you're going to do everything that the teacher and the professor requires of you. And they're still going to give you that bad failing grade. There were lessons in life that I had to learn. And the only way that I learned them is through failure, is through the hardship, through the not so good situations. But I'm going to tell you this. I'm not a repeat student and I don't like failing assignments and lessons more than once. See, if you keep running into the same situation, it's because you're not passing the test that God keeps giving. you. There were things that were on repeat. And I thought, am I dumb? Am I dumb, slow or stupid? Because I don't think I'm none of those. I don't think I'm dumb. I don't think I'm slow and I don't think I'm stupid. But why I keep ending up in these dumb, stupid, retarded situations? Like, how? How is it? OK, I just had all this money. Why I ain't got no money? Where my money go? How, how did I end up in this, How did I end up homeless? How did I end up carless? How did I how did I end up in jail in rehab? There were things that I ended up in situations that I ended up in because I was I allowed myself to get the bare minimum, even from myself. I would be down on myself. Ja, ja, you, you, that sounded crazy. Why did you say that? And why did you do that? And da, 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 da. I would beat myself up so bad. And then I would turn around and then beat my son up. Why you ain't do this? And why you ain't do that? And why you ain't do this? Because as a parent, when you're raising your child and you're the only one and you're trying to get your life together, you become frustrated and you become angry and you become disappointed and you become dis depressed because you look at your life and you say, this is not the life I was supposed to be living. I know 50 year olds right now that are depressed because they looked up and they don't have nothing to show for their life. Yeah, they got a house. Yeah, they got a car. Yeah, they got savings. But who are they? They don't even know. They literally gave a job and a company 20, 30 years and they don't really have nothing to show for it. I know people who are in their 50s and their 60s and they're angry because they're looking at 19 year olds and 20 year olds and 25 year olds become millionaires in six months. And they have barely made it to a thousandaire in 30 years. And it's because they didn't think that they could get better. Their better was the college education. Their better was the corporate job and the corporate office. But guess what? Better has risen. So why would we stay here if we know we have the propensity to come here? Why would I stay a renter for 20 years when I know I can own the whole block? Why would I do that? Some of you have been renters your whole life and you've made Alibaba and all of them across across the border rich. You have made them rich. And, and, and I'm telling you, y'all taking the stimulus money. And y'all giving it back to the rich. How we going to win if you keep giving them y'all money? How you going to win if you ain't right within? That's what Lauren Hill, Lauren Hill said it. And this is the thing. When life goes wrong, even when you do everything right, you still have to believe and know. And this is why faith is so important. See, there were times where I didn't I didn't have as much faith as I wanted to because there were things that I prayed for and God didn't deliver. And I felt like God had failed me. And I was like, I'm done with this church stuff. I'm done with this religion stuff. I'm done with this God stuff. I'm straight. I don't want none of it. I prayed to God that he would heal my mother. And see, if you've ever lost a parent or somebody that you really love, it makes you doubt everything. 
and everybody. When I lost my mama, I prayed. I prayed, God heal my mama. Evangelists came in there laying hands. They old trifling selves. I ain't that's a whole nother story for another day, but and that's another thing. Y'all don't let everybody pray for y'all. Don't let everybody put their hands on y'all. There are people that's gonna say they praying for you, okay? But they really P R E Y I N G. They praying on you. They ain't praying for you. When T Grizzly say they prayed on my downfall, that's real. There are people that hope you don't become successful. There are people that are okay with you being on this level. This is why it's so hard to make it in Detroit. It's so hard to make it in Detroit because people here have evil intentions in their spirit. And I am literally trying to figure out why. Why do you have such a hateful spirit from somebody, for somebody that you know is trying to be great? If anything, everybody that's related to you should be trying to help you. Everybody that knows you should be trying to push whatever it is that you build. You know why? Because pride and ego get in the way. The I don't like you spirit. The I think you're better than me spirit. Guess what? There are some people that are going to be better than you. Deal with it. There are some people that are more powerful than you. Get over it. There are going to be some people that are going to be much more successful than you. They're going to be great at things that you're not good at. They're going to be phenomenal at things you wish you were phenomenal at. But that don't mean hate on them. That don't mean dislike them. That don't mean don't support them. Listen, I promise you I wish I could sing like Karen Clark Shear. With a little bit of Jennifer Hudson, with a lot of Whitney Houston, with a little bit of uh 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 who else? Mariah Carey. Give me that voice. But do you think that I'm gonna not support my first lady because I can't sing like her? I'm not gonna not buy Mariah Carey's album because I can't sing like her. See, we gotta get out of that. That spirit, if we say we we know I deserve better, and if you're tuning in, you're listening to, yeah, I said it before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking about I deserve better. Your marriage, you in a marriage? Listen, let me tell you something. I was embarrassed about getting a divorce and, you know, everybody, did, I just had spent $30,000 on a wedding. Uh, everybody and their mama at my wedding. Uh, everybody, uh, I didn't uh, plushed out the whole fellowship hall only to turn around and be divorced. I was embarrassed. I was shamed. I felt like, what the hell just happened? Then to turn around and have all the stuff that happened afterwards, my ex-husband married another woman from the church. It was just crazy. It was just crazy. And if I told you half of the stuff that I've had to deal with, you'd be like, damn, Ja. <laughs> you do have the right to be the way that you are. Just like you do. You deserve better. Because after all you've been through, after all the enemy has tried to do to you, you still have your joy. I take pride in saying that when my bishop says it. Because it's real. I don't look like what I've been through. And neither do you. You know, I was on a plane yesterday. And I was talking about my son. And I said, yeah, my son's a senior at Cass Tech High School. And he's got accepted to Alabama uh, a and M, and this is his girlfriend, and da 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 I took pride in saying, you know why? I didn't feel bad for making nobody feel no type of way. If you ain't graduate from high school, that was your fault. If you ain't go to college and finish, that's your fault. I don't blame my son for being a single mama, uh, uh, or be, or blame my son because his dad didn't do what he was supposed to do when he was supposed to do it. The only thing that I can focus on is what Jaja do. The only thing that I can focus on is what I'm building for him. And you can't be you can't be scared about your accomplishments and what you are building. You because you knew you deserved better, you gonna get better. I knew that I wasn't gonna be homeless forever. When I was standing in that, sitting in that extended stay, sitting in that tub while tears was running down my eyes, trying to figure out where me and my baby was gonna stay at. How I was going to pay 
for this hotel? How I'm going to get gas to get him back and forth to school? I deserve better. So whenever I go get better and whenever you see me with better, I deserve it. If, if you see me with some blessings, it's because I prayed for them. I worked for them. There are some people out here that will never be able to honor what you do and what you're building for because they didn't have to work for it. Their mom and daddy helped them. They don't have no value in hard work because guess what? They ain't never had to work hard for nothing. I know a girl right now. She ain't worked for nothing. And she's sitting up here trying to help and educate some kids. You don't have work ethic. There are people that are in leadership positions that should not be in leadership positions. That's why it's important for you to do what God told you to do. You want to know why this world's so messed up? Because you ain't doing what you're supposed to do. The minute that you do what God called you to do is the minute that the environment around you is going to get better. See, because I know I deserve better, I don't allow people to bring me no foolishness. Okay? The people that I kick it with, we ain't talking about people. We talking about businesses. We talking about projects. We talking about quarter goals. We talking about getting to the bag. We talking about health. We talking about how we going to get to it. We talk Listen, we ain't talking about Did you see what she said on Yeah, I said it today? Did you see what she had on? Yeah, she was talking about her baby daddy. Those those, those are people that ain't trying to do nothing with their life. The, those, those are the people, those, those are the consumers. Those are the people that that buy what you sell. Because they ain't got nothing going on for themselves. And it ain't nothing bad. You know, there are some people that are doers. And then there are some people that are watchers. And when you are a watcher, you always going to be watching the doers. When you're a doer, you're always going to get hated on by the watchers. The watchers do what they do best. Watch. Watch to see. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something. You got to be careful with watchers because watchers don't even know that they work for the enemy. See, when they when when the enemy, when, when Satan finally realizes that he was working for God all along, he's going to feel real stupid. There are people that are trying to come against you and they don't even realize that they working for God all along. While they thinking they stopping you from doing something, God has got this situation set up. Oh, because let me tell you something. What the devil meant for evil, God will work it out for your good. There are people that are intentionally evil and doing malicious things and malicious intentions behind and they doing it with a smile. Because they want you to think that they, they have some type of interest and they have your back and they have your best interests at heart. They don't. They slicker than baby oil, baby. And I want you to be so grounded in the word of God and so grounded and have your faith and your one way commission and, and connection to God that you're not persuaded by nobody. There is not one single soul that's walking God's green earth that can persuade me from knowing what I know about my relationship with God. And this is one of the things and reasons why I'm so confident as a mother, because I know what I have taught my son is grown, is growing. With me and my village, we have raised an amazing, productive young man. Now, as he matriculates as, through adulthood, he's going to come across some changes and some challenges that he's going to face as a young man, just like you had to face as a young man and a young woman. That's why as you got older and you saw how your mama and daddy raised you, you didn't want nothing like that. And if they raised you well, where they shown you, the life that you know you could live, you've been working for it ever since. The minute that I got on an airplane in the eighth grade, my first time, well, seventh grade, my first time was going to Boston, Massachusetts because I was in a, in a, uh, a competition for future homemakers of America. And I created a, a tobacco uh, against tobacco campaign. That was my first taste of how great I knew I could be. And I won that competition with a gold medal. And then I turned around and was entering spelling bees and academic games and, and, and being involved in all these different things. You are your child's best benefactor. You are your best benefactor. And if you don't think that you deserve better, how do you anticipate 
raising the next generation or teaching the next generation that they deserve better as well. Because all we're going to do is keep creating repetition, repetitive behaviors. We just going to keep having, are we going to keep having generational curses or are we trying to get these generational blessings? Because I'm going for the generational blessings. I don't know what you and your family going for. I don't know what you and your family are trying to build. But as for me and my house, we're going for what God has for me. And God said that I am abundantly a blessed. He's going to bless me above all I could think. Imagine. People going to give unto my bosoms. So at the end of the day, you're tuning in, you're listening to y'all. I said it and before I take it back. I'm going to add more to it. Listen, follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Facebook. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know, Jaja. Listen, follow me on all my social media platforms. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Stop being fake. That's the problem. Y'all are so fake. Stop. Stop it. Stop saying Black Lives Matter and community this and community that. But you the first one to hate. You can't say you woke. You can't say you woke and then hating on your brother and sister that you say you love. That's why I be looking at people sometimes like, for real? Because the Bible says, how can you say you love me, but you hate your brother? How is it that you saying that you love God, but your brother, your sister, your cousin, your family member you beefed out with? Huh? God ain't honoring that. You may think he is because you being able to do whatever it is you want to do. God has given us free will. Yeah, you're going to feel like he blessing you. He ain't blessing you. He's just letting you do what you want to do and you calling it a blessing. That ain't a blessing. Because a blessing is above all that I can imagine or think. See, if you can do it, it ain't a blessing. That's just something you can do in the natural. It's what can't be done. That's the blessing. The blessing is when you can't do it on your own merit. That's the blessing. When you knew it wasn't supposed to go down the way it went down. That's the blessing. That's the favor. My son wasn't supposed to be alive. You know why? I drank orange juice and bleach so that I could have a miscarriage. I fell down and pushed myself down a flight of stairs so that I can go into a miscarriage. We went to the clinic so that I can get an abortion. My son is a miracle. And the minute that I decided that I knew I deserved better was the minute that our lives got better. That's the minute our lives got better. So do you think for one second I'm about to let you play with me and my baby? I ain't doing it. We didn't been through too much. And you been through too much. Don't let these folks play with you. And don't be scared to stand up for what you believe in. If you don't like how somebody is treating you, talking to you, dealing with you, guess what? The only way that it will change is if you do this. Open your mouth. Yeah, I said it before I take it back. I'm going to add more to it. I love y'all. Listen, one thing's for sure, two things for certain. You deserve better. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out my website, www.jajacihubbard, for all the latest and newest things that's going on in my world. And listen, make sure that you tune in tomorrow for my TV show. I have a TV show that's on TV, y'all, and I'm working to be a syndicated talk show host. So that way, when y'all look on channel two or four or seven, you see me sitting there with my little desk. Can y'all see it? Because I see it. And if you don't see it before you see it, you never will see it. Ah. Listen, I love y'all. Make sure y'all tune in. We trying to be great. And if you trying to be great, I hope you are going to be great. Listen, don't worry about what nobody else thinks. Just focus on you and what you got going on. I love y'all so much. Have a wonderful and amazing day and amazing weekend. And remember, you ain't asking for too much. Okay? They ain't got the capacity to carry what it is that you need done. That's why they can't do it. That's why you are who you are and they are who they are, okay? So listen, whenever somebody makes you feel like you don't deserve better, them are the people you need to mark and stay the hell away from because them people don't mean you no good. When you know you deserve better, everybody, everybody around you should want you to have better just as much as you do. Listen, I love y'all. Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, what I'm going to do? What I'm going to do? Ammo to it. Y'all already know. Listen, I love y'all. Have an amazing week. Listen, fired up. Can't take no more. Peace.